covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. SliceofSciFi.com And greetings, everyone, to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I am Michael Armenenge. And I'm Megan Zier. I'm Sam Roberts. Awesome. And we're super excited. We have a special guest today. Can I announce him? Can I? Can I? Absolutely. Please? We have our um, wonderful friend, Jeffrey Notkin, in the studio today. You may know him from Meteorite Man and many other wonderful things having to do with space and sci-fi nerdery. Hi, Jeff. Hello, friends. It's so great to be back. I missed you. We missed you, we too. We miss you, too. I miss you all the time. So it's true. There, There is a lot of interesting stuff going on in my life at the moment. And some of your listeners will remember that I hosted Meteorite Men for three years for Science Channel and Discovery. Mm -hmm. And it's still airing around the world. It's actually become quite, quite the international sensation, I gather. And our third season just aired in the UK. It's doing very well. Awesome. So uh, Meteorite Men is still alive mm -hmm. around around the globe. And but growing in a little bit, too, I think. Um, I think uh, since, like you said, it's it's actually being seen in a lot of different places. I, oh, yeah. I, you know, there, you never know. Hey, maybe we'll have to see some more um, Meteorite Men on TV sometime. Uh, it's certainly possible. And, you never know. And my co-host from the show, Steve Arnold, and I are great friends, and we talk all the time. And we are actually developing a new project together, which I'm not allowed to talk about. Yes, but <laughs> not that I'm trying to taunt or tease you, but I'm very excited about it, and you will be the first to know when, awesome. when we can when we can awesome. discuss that. But things that are actually happening in the real world, I a project that is very near and dear to my heart is an educational adventure show called STEM Journals, and I am the new host of this series. Awesome. So it's already run for one season, okay. and we're filming the second season. It's my first season with the show, but it's mm -hmm. the second season. And it's filmed and produced entirely in Arizona. Mm -hmm. right. And as you know, but not all of your listeners will know and may be surprised because of my funny accent that I am actually a resident of Arizona. Mm -hmm. I've, I've lived in Tucson for almost 10 years. You have a normal Tucsonan accent, I think. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Quite right, too. Yes, well, um, you know, it's the, the origin of this very proper accent, of course, is in southern Arizona. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they all talk that way down there. <laughs> So STEM Journals is a very unique television show. I've really never worked on anything like it before. It's an educational show that's aimed at younger viewers, primarily middle school viewers, mm -hmm. high school viewers, but adults will find it very entertaining as well. And the mission here is not just to look at STEM-related subjects, and I know your listeners are very sophisticated, and most will know that's okay. an acronym for Science, mm -hmm. Technology, Engineering, and Math. Okay. Mm -hmm. So rather than just do science stories and, for example, go, okay, well, look, here's a dinosaur display or here's an archaeological dig, we talk to people who are in STEM-related fields, mm -hmm. find out how they got there, what were their career paths, why is this interesting and exciting to you, and... I am a science writer, and I think that I have a pretty good idea of what's going on in the science world. I've been amazed, genuinely amazed, by some of the cutting-edge tech that I have seen making STEM journals. Really? And we, we filmed at Lowell Observatory mm, in Flagstaff. Nice. Mm -hmm. We filmed at NAU in Flag. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot at ASU Tempe. We filmed at U of A in Tucson, mm -hmm. Catalina Sky Survey on Mount Lemmon. Mm -hmm. So I've had the opportunity to interact with people doing some of the most interesting and innovative work from alternative fuels to searching for exomoons at Lowell Observatory. I got to drive a solar-powered sports car. I got hooked up to a giant <sighs> robot arm oh, and controlled yeah. it with wires attached yeah. to my biceps. I met an algae that's producing biodiesel. Oh. And at the Flexible Display Center at ASU, I saw something... I just couldn't, I couldn't believe that this existed. My director said, we're going to go look at flexible displays. And I thought, okay, so what is that? Maybe a screen that you could kind of, mm -hmm. you know, move Bend. a little bit. So I get to the lab and there is a, a, there's basically a television that's lying on the desk, a color television. It was the brightest, most vivid picture I've ever seen. Okay. And it was about eight by 10 inches, roughly. Mm -hmm. 
And the technician who was working with it said, oh, here, look at this. And he just rolled it up like it's a piece of paper. Oh, wow. It's an eighth of a millimeter thick, and it's made of organic material. Really? And I said, have you guys seen Terminator? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, this is how it starts. (laughs) No, but really fantastic stories. There is so much groundbreaking work being done in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Everybody who watches STEM journals will be amazed what we're doing here really with with alternative energy with astronomy with archaeology with with biomechanics it's really fascinating especially i mean no one's more surprised than i am and i think that i know what's going on and i really right. clearly <laughs> don't <Yeah. laughs> wow and so and and now this is on pbs right no it's it's produced for cox cox communications oh, okay. so Anyone in Arizona who is a Cox Cable subscriber will automatically get STEM journals on Cox Channel 7 and 1007. Okay. Okay. And on on demand in the free zone. Okay, Okay, good. But there's more. I'm not done yet. Okay. There there are also (laughs) apps for Android and other smartphones that you can download and watch STEM journals on your smartphone. You can watch it via Roku if you have Mm -hmm, a Roku Roku. set up. Awesome. Um, Cox has their own channel on Mm -hmm. roku and at cox7.com on their great website they will stream all the episodes of stem journals for free you don't have to log in or subscribe or pay a fee and you can watch anywhere in the world really this is one of the things i'm really excited about that's Mm -hmm. great and the the first season of the show was watched by teachers all over the country right so i i love this there's so many there's so much good programming that you have to subscribe to. You have to pay a fee or you have to mm-hmm. become a member or no, no, no. Not with STEM journals. Just go to the website. And as soon as the, the premiere of season two is Sunday, October 20. And as soon as it goes out on cable, it will also be uploaded to the website. Okay. So there's no delay. Well, a little bit of delay, but not a lot of delay. That's I, awesome. It's my understanding it'll it'll be almost it'll be almost instantaneous. That's awesome. And we've got, of course, Facebook page, STEM Journals on Facebook, STEM Journals on Twitter, and we're posting news all the time. One of the things that's been great fun for me filming the episodes is having some very talented location photographers along with me. Mm-hmm. And this is something that that I suggested to the producers, and they said, "Oh yeah, great." So. Of course, I'm in the arts as well, and I know some great photographers. And so we've had some amazing adventures. We were at, we were at Meteor Crater the past two <laughs> days filming there. And here's the irony. I filmed at Meteor Crater several times yeah. for Globe Trekker and with NASA. And so I know everyone up there now. We've all become <laughs> friends. I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a meteorite fanatic, and Meteor Crater is the <laughs> meteorite destination in the world. Yeah. If, it's if, Meteor Mecca. It is. It yeah, is. Of course it's, it is. I just said that yesterday to, yeah. to one of the crew. <laughs> So it's it's 4,000 feet across, and it's about 700 feet deep, and it's so well-preserved. And so everyone, is, they go, oh, you're doing a meteorite episode, you're done. And I go, no, actually, we're doing an alternative energy episode and civil engineering <laughs> for STEM journals. It just happens that the experiment that we're really interested in is being done at Meteor Crater. You can't so, get away from no, it. No, I, I, I just can't. But then... It's it's just it's a it's a beautiful coincidence and wow. any any opportunity to go up there. So so the idea is, I I travel around Arizona and I investigate STEM related stories and careers, mm-hmm. and I record my stories in the STEM journal. So I had a kind of epiphany when I when I first got interested in doing the show and met with the executive producers and I go. Oh my God, it's just like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. (laughs) It's a show about a book. So I said, just like in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, there has to be an actual book. Oh. And here it is. Here's the actual STEM journal. Nice. So That's beautiful. So I had this, uh, this was custom made for me by Rock and Jay Leather Mm -hmm. in Tucson. Mm -hmm. And the company's owned by a British friend of mine, super talented leather artist. And so this goes everywhere on the expeditions with me. Oh, I love it. That's neat. So that is so cool. Well, you know, I you know me well. Mm-hmm. I love movie props. Give me a movie prop, some original wardrobe. <laughs> We're gonna we might talk about that later. And I'm I'm very happy. So I love the unique things mm-hmm. that are associated with television and film. 
And so I wanted to have something that would make the entire journey with me, that would always be with me. Mm -hmm. And because it's such a cutting edge show and all the technology and all the stories that we're investigating are so modern, that it's so new, I thought, well, let's go with a very classical look yeah. for, the, for the book. And, you, and you're actually posting stuff in there. It's not right, just I was a about prop, to say. Right? Is there anything in there? <clears throat> it's written in invisible ink. <laughs> oh. That's what I was, I was, I was, that was a tip that I was given today by one of the executive ah. producers. The idea is, <laughs> was, that as we travel around having all these fantastic adventures, I do sketches and write notes and little mm -hmm. cartoons and things as I do. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I haven't had a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> One of, here's here's one of the most cool things about this. I'm working with two completely different production crews. I've got two directors, mm -hmm. David Rout and Frank Kraljic, Deep Sky, uh, uh, Deep Sky Productions and Painted Black Productions, both Arizona-based production teams. And so I'll do one episode with Frank, and then I do another episode with Dave. And and Frank is a very high energy, uh, very intense focus director, and he's very animated, and he loves kind of okay, Jeff, you know, you're gonna do this, and you're gonna jump off this, and then you're gonna blow this up, <laughs> and then and and Dave is very relaxed and very calm, and and it's got a really clear image in his mind, and and one of my friends said, God, that must be driving you crazy, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, No, actually, it's brilliant because I, I've never had the opportunity of working with two directors before at the same time, so mm. we're we're tackling the show from from two very different viewpoints. And actually, we were at a, we were at a promotional event at, at Cox uh, headquarters today, mm -hmm. Washington Street, Ooh. here in Phoenix. And, and they showed me, they gave me this fantastic poster that they that they oh, made. Oh, wow. Oh, neat. And you'll, you heard it here first. There you go. There, there is going to be a STEM Journals billboard on University oh, in Phoenix. And this, really? this, this is the mock-up of it. That is so awesome. We filmed an archaeology episode and this is a photograph, of yeah. course. This is the this is Mesa Grande, mm -hmm. the uh, the Hohokam ruins. I'm and, digging and, your Indiana and you're looking Jones at the hat, hat right? Aren't you? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I took the meteorite men truck up for this episode because I thought ah, archaeology. <laughs> I should take the meteorite men truck. And as I'm packing to go, I thought, oh, I'll probably just throw my official Luc Lucasfilms Indiana Jones replica hat in the truck, just in case they want to do a bit. <laughs> And then I got to the location. I said to Frank, hey, I've got this Indiana Jones hat. He goes, oh, my God, you absolutely have to wear that. We're going to, OK, we're going to do a whole bit with that. So we do <laughs> we do an Indiana Jones homage. There is a Meteorite Man homage. And it, it's tons of fun. It's very funny. It's a, it's a, it, there, is, there are a lot of laughs in this show. And I think people who enjoyed Meteorite Men and I think people who enjoy science fiction will will get it. We'll get a kick out of it. Don't think uh, educational television. That's <laughs> too boring. No, it's, it's funny. Boring, there's Sydney, there's even some yeah, slapstick no. in it. And of course, you know, I always have to insert some obscure science fiction right. lines into any episodes <laughs> yeah. that I do. So I got a great hitchhiker's line in when we were filming at Meteor Crater. We'll 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 see we'll see who recognizes who spots that first. Wow. <laughs> I am so looking forward to this mm -hmm. show. I am. I, I've got to go out and check it mm -hmm. out. Absolutely, and and I hope you folks go out there and check it out as well because it's it sounds like it's going to be a blast. Thanks. Yeah, so. I, I I don't think I've ever been so excited about doing any television as I have. And I mean, it's a modest budget. It's a regional show, but it's got mm -hmm. a big heart. There's mm -hmm. a lot of love and care going into this show. Everyone who's doing this is doing it because they believe in the show. It's it's it's. It's heart and education first yeah. and commerce second. It's was, a really interesting experience, actually, to work on something like that. Are you nervous about so many kids watching you in the classroom? <laughs> well, that's, a, that's an interesting question, Megan. And one of the things, that, there's one thing that really, really surprised me about Meteorite Men, and that is it was such a big hit with kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I thought it would appeal to an older audience because it's i mean it's mm -hmm. fairly sophisticated there's a lot of science in it there's a lot of gadgets and stuff and i thought you know kind of you know 20 to 40 year old guys will dig all of that stuff mm -hmm. but kids loved it yeah and mm -hmm. all these parents uh -huh. are going oh emailing us and saying oh my kid wants to be a meteorite hunter and he's out digging up the garden <laughs> all the time <laughs> so walking so, around with a stick and a magnet yeah exactly so as a result of that i've been interacting with younger viewers a lot over the past few nice. years doing science events and doing the gem show and astronomy mm -hmm. expos and, and we have a lot of young viewers mm -hmm. come along to to meet steve and me so i've it was an unexpected bonus, and I have really enjoyed the opportunity to help inspire and hopefully educate mm -hmm. a bit younger viewers. So then when the opportunity 
came along to do STEM journals, I go, well, that's just even more in that same direction. This is something that's very important to me, is to inspire younger viewers and make them understand that science doesn't have to be mm -hmm. a boring old guy in a lab mm -hmm. coat. Science is a solar-powered racing car to right. me, yeah. and I got mm -hmm. to drive it. And I remember <laughs> seeing the, the the photos on Facebook. You sent those off to and it was awesome. Uh, that That's so cool. <laughs> well, here, here's, I wouldn't, I, I, they wouldn't, shouldn't have let me in with it because I wouldn't have brought it back. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the best bit. We were setting up to film at ASU and the car is owned by a professor at ASU and he's called the Solar Man. Mm -hmm. So he drives up in this amazing red convertible with this giant rig on the top that looked, the first thing I said was, our first catch of the day, because it reminded me of the Ion Cannon on, on the ice planet Hoth from Empire. I mean, really. And so the director comes over and he goes, okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to drive the car and Jeff's going to sit in the passenger seat. And he goes, no, no, we can't do that. And he goes, look, and there's this giant kind of titanium column or something where the passenger seat would be that holds this solar charging array for the car. And, and he goes, no, I'm sorry, there's no way for the passenger. He goes, here, I'll just let Jeff drive. And I go, yes. <laughs> See, that's one of those moments when it works out yeah. because yeah. normally you go, blast, there's a column in the passenger seat. I can't do anything. But in this case, it was superb. There is a column in the passenger seat, which means I get to drive the solar power racing car. It's good to be Jeff Notkin. It really is. <laughs> It's, I'm really having more fun than should be allowed. Actually, <laughs> well, be good. Honest. Then I'm glad all the kids will get to see that. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, I tell you, we're going to definitely follow this. And thank you so much for coming along, uh, out and show, sharing with us because it sounds fantastic. We can tell you're super, super excited <laughs> about it. Your enthusiasm's <laughs> infectious. Your enthusiasm is totally yeah. infectious. Yeah. We will have all those links on the website and uh, we will definitely continue to, to check catch up with you if you have anything exciting and cool that you need to share with us you're, we're always here and you're always welcome thank you so much awesome. i shall return <laughs> <laughs> all right folks there you go go check it out if you want to know more about it go to the website of course we'll have links to that on the site we'll also be uh t twitter facebook all that fun stuff and uh we will be back with more because uh jeff's with us all week Woo. there you go 